In the early morning hours of June 27, 2013, a team of Los Angeles sheriff's deputies and detectives pulled up to the property of 80-year-old Eugene Mallory, a retired engineer, a man with no criminal record, a respected and politically active member of the small desert community of Little Rock, California. He loved conversation, would chat with friends and even strangers for hours at the local restaurant down the street. In fact, it was at this restaurant where he met his second wife, a woman more than 30 years his junior. He used to come in pretty much every night and order. We just kind of hit it off from the minute we seen each other, conversation, just joked with each other. And I would sit whenever I had extra time and just talk to him because he just had all these great stories and you were just drawn to him. He must know something, but don't say nothing. <laughs> it starts too high. Yeah, you don't get your breath all out. Tanya describes Eugene as a gentle giant who lived a low-key, quiet life. But all that changed the morning the sheriff's department crashed through their front gate and raided the property. The officers had pushed their way into the front gate. It looked like military cops because they were just like, they had helmets, he had a Bataram metal and um, big, big, huge guns. They just kept asking me, do you know of anything illegal here? But I kept telling her, no, there's nothing here. And at one point she said, yes, there is. And I said, what? But then she wouldn't answer me. And I was like, there's nothing here. I looked at Garrett and Garrett looked at me like, what is going on? What the officers were looking for was the most villainized drug of our era, meth. We never had no meth. We don't do meth. It's just unbelievable to me that they would even say that or even think that. This is the L.A. Sheriff's Department executing a search warrant. If you're At the time of the raid, Tanya was asleep in one of the three trailers on the property. Her son Adrian lived in another trailer, where Tanya's niece and her boyfriend were also visiting. A handyman who often helped around the property was tinkering with a car. Slowly, each one emerged, responding to the announcements made by the police. And one by one, they were each detained. But Eugene was nowhere to be seen. Eugene was hard of hearing. He would not hear me if I was in the kitchen. You had to like be right like this for Gene to hear you. Armed officers entered the house, and what happened next is where things get murky. Deputies performed a knock and notice on the kitchen door and gained entry into this small and cluttered residence. Eugene Mallory exited his bedroom with a 22 caliber handgun extended out and held up with both hands. Matt was gesturing that I, you know, he goes, I heard five to six, he goes, shots. And I was like, ah, it's okay, it's okay. I go, everything's okay. No, 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 I just didn't, I didn't get it, you know? And then he did it again, real slow. And I just remember it just hitting me like a brick. And I'm like, oh my God, something's happened to Gene. Eugene Mallory died within an hour of six gunshot wounds, all fired by a single deputy who told the coroner that Mallory had walked towards him. With a 22 caliber handgun extended out and held up with both hands, deputies fired six times, which dropped him to the bedroom floor. The problem is, when the investigating coroner arrived on the scene, he didn't find Eugene Mallory on the bedroom floor. He found him on the bed. I came back to that bloody bedroom, you know, there was blood just running down the, the back of the bed and the covers were just saturated in the thick, thick blood. The mask that they put on to help you breathe was just full of it and um, I was just sick. It appears the decedent collapsed near the bedroom entryway and was moved by paramedics to the bed prior to my arrival. But later, that story changed. The officer who shot Mallory admitted during an internal investigation that Mallory was not charging at him, but was in bed at the time of the shooting. Before listening to the audio recording, the officer believed that he told Mallory to drop the gun prior to the shooting. The recording revealed, however, that his commands to drop the gun occurred immediately after the shooting. Eugene Mallory never fired a single bullet. The deputy who shot him says he removed the gun from Mallory's hand and set it on a bedside table before anyone outside the department could enter the room. The police found no evidence of methamphetamine production on the property. What they did find were two juvenile marijuana plants grown by Tanya's son, Adrian, who holds a California medical marijuana license. 
How is that a justification for coming in and killing a man? Nothing was done illegally here. And now to justify it through that, through marijuana or whatever they're trying to justify it through, is makes it even more wrong. How could a detective obtain a warrant authorizing a raid on an 80-year-old man's property in search of meth, only to leave with a couple of marijuana plants? An anonymous informant tipped off a detective Patrick Hobbs about the property. Hobbs, a self-proclaimed controlled substances expert, surveilled the property for four days. I drove to the location and drove around the entire property. Once I was downwind from the location, I could smell the strong odor of chemicals. I formed the expert opinion that the location is being used as a clandestine methamphetamine lab site. The community in general likes the police to a degree, but we, we keep a sharp eye on them because they do, do things that are outrageous. The L.A. Sheriff's Department has been plagued by scandal in recent years, from its prisoner abuse problems to its hiring of violent and dangerous personnel. And many people living in these rural outskirts of L.A. County have a deep suspicion and fear of them. People have again and again found that agencies who are supposed to be serving the people are actually acting in ways that are oppressive to the people. A lot of people have encountered these things and it's a pattern in practice. It's not an isolated thing by any means. The U.S. Department of Justice is actively investigating Antelope Valley Unit regarding allegations of systematic harassment and profiling of minority and low-income residents. Tanya has filed a wrongful death suit against them. But she knows that all the money in the world isn't going to undo her husband's violent death. Every day you get to tell a joke and you get to tell us something tiny and beautiful and, and you're pretty and then you're gone, you know? And I want him to be gone, you guys. I just want him gone. He must know something, but don't say nothing, he just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling along. He don't plant taters, he don't plant cotton, then that plant's and is soon forgotten, but old man river, he just keeps rolling along.